right, so y'all already know what this is. The Shy Season 6, Episode 7 review. So we already kind of had an idea, right, of how this episode was going to go from, you know, how the last episode ended. But nonetheless, I felt like Bakari was in most of the elements of this episode. Um, although it was Papa's dad who died, it was Bakari who was more so, like, highlighted. Um, and I felt for Bakari because he was, you know, he felt wanted. Papa's dad made him feel appreciated. As we saw in the last couple episodes, He Papa's dad was including him, you know, making him feel a part of the family and making him feel like a son, too. And, you know, that was Bakari's biggest thing. He always, he wanted to felt, feel seen. He just never felt that. So just, you know, losing somebody who that like was a father figure to him. So in the beginning and Papa just, you know, putting the blame on him and being upset with him. I was so happy when they, you know, fast forward when they was over the casket and they was talking about him. And Papa said he would be like, oh, because your shirt not iron and then Bakari with the tie. So it was just good that they kind of made peace with it. But it was still sad at the end when, you know, he was dressed and ready for the funeral. Um, Well, he was there, but he wasn't, you know, at the grave site with them. So I wanted to what transpired that made him feel like that and now he kind of needs a place to stay so i don't know if it was you know now he got put out is it because of papa's feelings or did the mom say you know i think it's best that you know we cut ties with you nonetheless i'm curious to see don't know if we'll see what comes of that but i'm curious to see that and him pulling that gun out on nook nook i feel like he was letting you know like this is somebody i cared about that was my father figure why would y'all do that like and then y'all didn't even give me the heads up like he knew it was coming because he was there when papa's dad didn't take the money but he like y'all didn't even just like let me know it's just like how is that happening and nook like you know what don't pull another gun on me but he didn't nook has like an admiration for him too i feel because he knows bakari's background and so forth and then zay just sit down like he's just so eager like he want to come up the rank so bad to prove a point to do that that it's like move around like go about your way please zay but I think that's why Nuck Nuck has like a you know admiration for him. So he's like, you know what? I know you hurt and I know you grieving. This is what happens in the street. Calm down, move around, get out my face, Bakari, type stuff. But then who got Miss Maisha with the diss track? Like Miss, we've already seen a tension this season building between Maisha and Gemma, right? So now Maisha, I mean Gemma comes late to the session. Last time I told her, hey, do this before the session so we can, you know, maximize our time. Then you come late. How that work? So yes, I'm gonna put this line in here. I am gonna dish you. Stop playing with me. You think that girl better than me? I'ma show you. So I feel like um Bakari's sister come in, definitely put the I think her name Brittany, definitely put the battery in Maisha's back so we can get that fuel to see her, you know, go through and get through this. Jake, though, I feel, though he said he not, but the way he jumped up is a little jealous, and he's curious about that way to go. I mean, but look, Jake, you took her from your best friend, so don't be shocked when your now friend sister might take her from you. What are we going to do? What you going to do? I mean, I don't know. And jumping back to Bakari real quick, I feel like everything Jamal was saying um, before, like, you know, when you mess with these hood niggas, you know, and go on this and go to that, and you keep having to bring people into your mess, I feel like that happened. When Rashawn brought them guns to the church, like, he like, I can't lose the roof over my head. And I mean, I feel like that's the way they had to do it because there was no other way she was going to find out about them guns. So he, you know, he got, he had to expose his hand. She was just totally upset, even though he had just saved them with the guns. I want to see if more gonna come from that. But you saw as soon as he thought the chance of him might lose his home, he tracked Bakari down and got him them guns. But him taking them to Nay, I really don't know how I feel about it. I mean, that's his girl, but bringing her into kind of what he got going on for a little while. And I know we don't have a place to stay. He really don't have nowhere to put him. But Sean said, don't take him to the pastor house. Sir, what do you want me? You brought him to me outside. You didn't even offer me a ride to see where I would take them to. Okay, yes, I put you in this place, but I gave you them two racks. Okay, cool. You want to be like that? Fine. Jake and Victor, it was nice of Jake, I mean, Victor to bring Jake into the fold because Jake kind of feels like of an outcast right now. So that was a good conversation that they had. I feel like coming from the men's meeting, you know, and being like, let me just make my brother a part of it. I want him to feel like he's family. And then. And Victor and Fatima might start a family. I love the elements of her mom and sister um, being a part of this um, season. Um, I think it's really cute. I was so shocked. At first, I thought she didn't wouldn't want to have a family, and she was really hesitant. And she still was a little hesitant, but at least I feel like she's thinking about it, and she's considering it a bit more because she feel like 
this my man and I'm going to stick beside him. So more to come on Fatima and the Victor family. And, you know, so we're going to see. But then we had, I mean, I was so happy he finally went to his dad. Because we know he needs the support. We done seen him get knocked down too many times that it's like, you know, you need to enlist some support. And I know he didn't really say, you know, come out here and do it for me. But he need Darnell in his earpiece. And Darnell, I, for his son, he's going to figure it out. I don't want to see anything happen to anybody else on the cast. So I just need them to get it together. Because them letting Duda walk up in that funeral as if he was not like public enemy number one. I understand we in a church house and we got to, you know, let the Lord do his work. But somebody should have slapped him at least. Like, for real, like, you just, like, remember on the five heartbeats when, when Red came to the funeral and the wife slapped him? Like, get up out of here. I was hoping that's what Papa Mama did. And I know Duda is a very vicious, you know, wild, for the streets animal. But, come on now, like, you can't really, do, you, and he, he came in his all white, too, as if we, they wanted him there. Are, I mean, do you have respect or do you have respect? And then that little pause when Nuck walked out, I think he was thinking about what Duda told him at the chess when they was playing chess. Like, sometimes you have to sacrifice, you know, your family for, you know, the ones you love for what you want to get. So now I'm wondering, is he willing, going to sacrifice Duda for the one he loved? Because, first of all, Keisha coming to talk to him, I did not feel was okay. Like, that's grown man business. When men, when there's a dispute between men, let that dispute stay between the men. Like, they was beefing. In that warehouse, let them beef in that warehouse. This is not for you to do. But as we saw when she talked to him in that hallway, when he apologized to her, she still got a little inkling of some feelings for him. So her going there, she felt like she could leverage her hand, leverage her heart to be like, help us out. But what did that mean for how you made your man look back at the crib? Because now you gave him one up. Because you saw when he came looking, for, when Emmy came looking for Duda, not like, oh, you ain't know Keisha. I already talked to Keisha. What? That's one thing we don't do. You do not get an outside world a chance to tell you what's going on the inside of your home. Okay, that's a little message. Back to the shop. But yeah, so I feel like Nuck was looking, you know, looking over his shoulder at Keisha. Like he want, you know, I messed up, but I want that old thing back type of thing. So we want to see what's going to transpire from that. Keisha, don't do that no more. Let them men, let that men, let them men handle that business. So that's all I got to say there. But I think more to come. I don't, because I just feel like these outsiders, they're going to try to come in and infiltrate um, Duda, but they're going to need some inside support and some inside intel, some something, right? And everything is moving so fast. How is Kev? He just moved. How was he already packing up his apartment? Like, come on. Come on. I can't believe this is happening. And come on, episode eight, because I'm ready. Y'all let me know in the comments what y'all thought about this episode. I felt like I left some out. Let's shit chat. Let's go. <laughs> oh, and I got to add in that session that Keisha had with her mom. I feel like a lot of her issues do stem from her relationship with her mom. And I feel like the mom holds on to a lot of stuff. So then when she does, you know, talk to the kids or been out to the kids, it's in a more, like, angry or resentful way. So I do see that. I think the session was good. Keisha, I feel like she did take it a little more. Like, now nah, you don't want me. But I think this season, Keisha is just in her emotional state. Everything bothers her type. She's not really hearing. She's just really acting on things um, state. So we're going to see what transpires from that, too. But I was happy that Nina did actually come and sit down with them. And they, I ain't had to deal with the drama of Dre and that little lady she worked with. Okay, the home wrecker. But all right, for real. Let's chit chat in the comments.